Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Dory Patrick here coming at you from the sitting spot in my art studio here at home. How have you been? It's been a couple weeks, hasn't it? We have a lot to catch up on. Um, I'm joined here by my little bestie, Callie Mae Butterbean. Hi, baby girl. She's very tired. As many of you who have pets know, July 4th can be a little stressful. Um, she's not too bad, but um, it was kind of a rough start to the evening when it started getting dark. We had fireworks popping off for a couple hours here in the neighborhood. And she's not a fan, but um, she snuggled with us in bed and we turned the fan on high. <laughs> did our best to to comfort her but so she's a little sleepy today and she partied hard with friends at daycare so that was super fun for her um hopefully this angle will work today so gosh since I saw you last um Okay, so I had, uh, we went to Art Fest Midwest in Des Moines um, last weekend, and um, phenomenal, phenomenal, successful show. It was, um, and my hair's a little weird today. Um, it was an amazing show. I had fabulous sales. I really wanted to um, get some footage for you guys for the video and there was no time to do it. Like we were um, banging right at the beginning of the show. Um, so thank you. Thank you Des Moines for coming out and supporting us. It was really, really nice. And um, you know, when you have a successful show, then you have to uh, get back to work. <laughs> to fill your booth for the next show. Uh, yeah, but it was great. Um, we were, the show itself was a little, the setup was a little wonky. Um, we were on two different levels and that was a little strange. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a regular occurrence now, but um, we came out of it Unscathed. Sometimes when shows move their locations, it has some negative effects on the artists. Um, so I can't speak for everybody else, but we ended up having a great show. But um, yeah, it was uh, Des Moines is so fun, and we came back just fried, like so tired. It was so busy. So. Um, we're grateful for that and uh it is uh oh so also since I saw you my husband had his annual ice cream social so for those of you who don't know he is obsessed with homemade ice cream <laughs> uh he gets super creative with his flavors. I think this year he really outdid himself. He did some really crazy creative stuff that really turned out yummy. So we had our, we hosted the ice cream social um, Sunday afternoon, the third, and the weather couldn't have been more perfect. It was perfect, you guys. Like no humidity, sunny, not too hot, nice breeze coming through, and um, we have lovely shade in the front yard, which is mostly where everyone ends up hanging out. Um, so it was just lovely. We had so much fun. I always feel bad because I can never get around to talking to everybody and when I do, it's like brief because I'm running to do some help someone or do something um, because it's such a busy, it's a busy production. But um, hopefully everyone had a good time and um, got all sugared up. It's, it's a fun thing for us to do. Um, it started out as sort of a gratitude thing we did for our neighborhood because we have such great neighbors. 
and it has grown and grown over the years <laughs> to to um include family and and such so it was super fun um and of course we were exhausted after that too um yesterday the fourth we had a little breakfast with neighbors and that's when the rain and the humidity came in we kind of used up all of our good weather on the ice cream social but um still just really really good stuff and um we used yesterday to just sort of recover <laughs> from everything so now um hubby's back to work callie may is back in her groove and I will be getting back into my groove uh, later today just in production mode for my next show which is Appleton Wisconsin so that is um, I'm saying this off the top of my head I think it's July 23rd yeah July 23rd and 24th in Appleton Wisconsin we had so much fun there last year um, we're going to come back for more. So that'll be my next in-person show. Um, I will not be at Powderhorn in uh, August. Uh, we had a conflict with scheduling for that weekend, and I won't be able to make it. So I'm sorry, Minneapolis people. Um, it just isn't going to work out this year. But, um, we've got to look on the bright side, and I think the bright side will be I'll have more time to spend, um, f putting things in the Etsy shop, so my folks who are too far to come to a show or who prefer to, um, shop online, I'm hoping to get a lot more of my one-of-a-kind and my originals into the Etsy shop later this summer. We are doing some um, fun traveling, um, hoping to see some family and stuff in the late summer and into the fall, so that's kind of our priority right now is we really need to do some travel that is not involving also lugging all of my stuff. Uh, so yeah um yeah so that's the update I am uh, just kind of getting geared up again to work on some stuff um, for shows um, another thing that I am has had my attention lately is as I mentioned before I am one of the new teachers for fodder school 2 um, and I'm going to share links in the description. Um, we have just opened up the fodder school challenge, which is free. So, um, you can sign up for it still anytime and enjoy nine free mixed media art lessons from nine different teachers. And my project that I shared for the fodder challenge are these uh, prayer f mini prayer flags. So it's a mini version of the um, of the larger prayer flags that I did for that show earlier in the year. So these are the samples. I did one that says magic and one that says hope. And let's see if I can get a little closer. Um, it's just a great way to use up scraps and uh, extra trims and things like that so um, and don't isn't this cute the little paintbrush for the holder I really want to make more of this smaller size um, it was really fun so yeah sign up and join us um there are so many great teachers who are teaching for fodder school this year I mean there were last year too but um, it, it's just like wow fun teachers and fun techniques so please join us like I said I'll put the link in the description the, signing up for the challenge is free so you can join us for free for that and it gives you a little taste of what actual fodder school 2 will be like and um, what some of the teachers have to offer so if you like what you see please join us and sign up for fodder school 2 which is every month a new another mixed media instructor 
sharing um, how they create collage fodder and then a project that uses up their collage fodder. So please join us. We would love to have you and we'd love to see what you make. So today I thought I would do, um, I'm gonna switch the camera around and do a little demo of this new product that I got. Um, I think I got this from Blick and it's um, printing foam. So let me grab the little, this is the, this is the um, little, uh, what you call it, that was in the packaging. You know what I'm trying to say. So it's Innovart um, Presto Foam Printing Plate. So these are the six by nine foam printing plates that I got. It was a package of 30, which is gonna really take me um, a while to use up. But um, I really wanted to play around with some of my favorite images that I love to repeat in my journals or possibly print on fabrics and stuff and create some more collage material with repeat patterns. And um, this is sort of a quickie version of a, um, I think I wanna say lino cut. So it's not the carving into a rubber piece, but it's actually um, uh, engraving or um, pressing into pieces of foam. Now, you could absolutely be saving your foam pieces from like, uh, meats and vegetables from the grocery store and that kind of thing. That is not my jam. <laughs> I'm not, I just don't do that. And I saw these and they're the perfect size. I cut them down very easily into the sizes that I want to use for my purposes. And uh, I love them. I get about three or four stamps out of the, out of the, um, print, out of the print and then I need to wash it. Um, and I'll show you in the video kind of how I use them. But I was playing around earlier with a, um, uh, let's see, I don't know how big this is. I don't know, maybe four by five or four by six. It was a little piece that I just um, etched into with a ballpoint pen, um, a little landscape. And I just printed it with some basic black acrylic paint. And um, I'm learning the more I do this, certain paints work a little bit better on this. I would say a little heavy body, a little body to the paint kind of helps it print a little bit better. So that was the first one I printed down just in my sketchbook on a scratch piece of paper. Um, and then I painted the page black and then, whoops, got stuff falling out and then printed again on top with sort of this um, ecru color that was kind of heavy body. And then the color you see, I colored in with my Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons. So um, I'm loving this idea of printing on top of another color because that color will pop through the lines. And then I lo also love the idea of layering on top of it. So I'm going to play around. I'm going to show you some of the um, printing plates that I created. And we'll just play around and see what happens. I did um, another one. <laughs> I forgot that you want to write. Like if you do any wording, any text, you need to do that backwards. Because obviously, duh, when you print it, it... Um, comes up backwards so <laughs> I did a hell yes and I don't know how this looks on the camera but it printed backwards so I went back made another hell yes and did my letters backwards so that it would work but and then this one was um just like some watered down kind of thinner gray paint that also gave me a really cool impression I just I love this look I love the look of that kind of imperfect line and I love the texture that this foam is giving me so I recommend it and this um Innovart the foam sheets they come in other sizes too I can't remember um 
what sizes they came in, but I'll put a link to this in the um, description and you can see for yourself and decide if this is something, you know, that you are interested in. Like I said, you can absolutely recycle just about any kind of, any kind of foam or any kind of um, material that will hold that embedded um, mark will work for something like this. And it really is just trial and error and playing around. This I did with a ballpoint pen. Both of these I did with a ballpoint pen. And um, I feel like it worked just just great. So yeah, so I'm gonna flip the camera around. Um, I'm gonna just work on some stuff and do a little playing around and um, we'll kind of talk you through maybe some of the paints that I'm using and um, I just think it's a fun, a fun alternative, another way to um, get, use your designs in a repetitive manner, um, creating more collage material, that kind of thing. It's really fun. So I'll see you over at the studio table. Okay, welcome back. We're at the studio table now. And uh, just to review, this is the product that I got. Um, I think you pronounce it Innovart. Um, and it's Presto Foam. And I got this through Blick, I believe. And I will um, find a link so that you can um, find it too. It comes in different sizes. The size I chose was six by nine. Um, and it just comes in these lovely, fairly thin sheets that are just ready to go. And if you wash them and take care of them, you can reuse them over and over again. It just, I'm really excited about this. Um, I think when I was talking with someone about this, they were kind of asking me a little bit about what's the appeal. And for me, the appeal is there are certain marks and images that, um, I like to repeat or I don't want to, I guess I don't want to lose track of them or I like, there are certain things I just love to reuse in different applications, whether it's in my art journal or um, on paper that I can use as collage. A lot of this will be end up in collage projects. So that's kind of my thought is you can create your own image and repeat, repeat as much as you want. So this is that um, landscape one that I did with a ballpoint pen and I've printed with this several times, um, maybe six or eight times. It holds up really well. Um, I would say, I don't know if you think of this as a disadvantage or not, but after three or four prints, especially if you're using heavy body paint, um, it can gather in those little crevices that you created with the ballpoint pen. So you'll want to um, give it a rinse in the sink and blot it with a paper towel and let it dry before you use it again. Because the, all those layers over and over again collect and then you don't get quite the crisp image that you're after. Does that make sense? So... Um, and I had no problem. I mean, this is just foam. I ran it under the faucet in the kitchen and just sort of rubbed it with my fingers. It doesn't come perfectly clean, but I don't care about that. As long as I've got my engraved print there. So here are a few more that I made. Um, this is finally... <laughs> Like I said, I remembered that I needed to put the letters backwards. That was hilarious. I know better than that. And I don't know why I had that brain fart. But So just a reminder, it's going to be opposite of whatever you draw. So text, obviously, you will want to reverse. Um, and here's a little sun that I drew. I love my sunshines. This would be an image that I would use again and again in collage projects. And then I got a little more elaborate and did this funky hand um, pattern. And I'm curious to see. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try a few different paints and we'll just kind of see uh, what happens with these. Um, I've prepped a page in my, a couple pages in my sketchbook 
I tell you guys, your sketchbook can be your best friend. You can record all of your experimentations in here. And I say, I mean, every once in a while, I'll tear something out of my sketchbook to use it in a project. But mostly, this is sort of my little diary and my little recording of my experimentations. So I highly recommend you get a couple sketchbooks and just start filling those babies up because it's such a great, it's such a great thing to look back on, especially when you get stuck and you need an idea to kind of bounce off of. Your sketchbooks can be a great reference for that. So I'll probably do a little printing in the sketchbook, we'll see. Um, I also have some assorted papers. This is newsprint paper, which you can buy in big pads. Um, really anywhere. You can get them from any art supply store. I was doing some, I can't remember what I was doing, but somehow I printed some paint on some of these. So I'm just going to print right on these. These are not precious to me. Newsprint is very affordable. Um, you can get a big pad of it for under six or eight dollars. And I love it because it's kind of porous and it's also not really bright white it's kind of this ecru color that um I think just kind of looks a little a little more fun um I also found a couple of scraps of paper that I thought I would want to do some dark some prints on some dark we'll see if we get around to all this <laughs> I always have grand ideas and then I have to move on to something else but um, I'm really jonesing to play around with printing on the painted papers because you get that color popping through on your on your lines. So I'm going to start off, let's see, let's start simple. I'm going to do, so this is a um, crimson, oh, carmine red from Arteza. So you guys probably see me use a lot of these when I'm teaching and doing demos. Um, Arteza is a really good middle of the grade paint. It's better than just a student grade acrylic, I feel. It's got a lot of pigment and a, and a little bit of body. Not a lot. Um, so I play with this a lot and I get a lot of samples from them. Um, these little sample tubes are great because you can just experiment and be free. You don't feel wasteful. You know, they're just fun to play with. So I'm gonna, so I've laid a layer of that down and I'm thinking that I wanna try this sun and I'm gonna step away just a sec because of course, you know, I forgot to grab what I wanted to use. That's always the way. I'm just gonna try a couple things. Oh, and off camera here, you can't really see it, but I've got a um, palette sheet laid down for rolling some of my ink. Now, when I was experimenting before, I could, <laughs> this is really dorky, I couldn't find a brayer. I had one brayer that like had stopped working. It, ha it was so gummed up because I'm terrible about cleaning things that it wouldn't roll, so I couldn't roll it. So these uh, these prints that I did originally with that landscape stamp, I actually used a sponge and just sponged the paint on. So today for the first time, I'm gonna try a brayer and we'll see how this, how this goes. I think that there is, I think there's kind of that sweet spot where you can get too much paint or you can get not enough paint, but I think that's also kind of what's magical about this process. So, and hopefully you're not shaking too much there. Okay, let's try Little Miss Sunshine with my, I got a new brayer that's not gummed up and I'm promising myself that I'm going to clean it up. So, and the other thing I learned is you want to move kind of fast because you don't want the acrylic to dry too fast so you can't get an impression. And I just was using my hands. Um, I've seen a few folks online use brayers to press it down. I think you may want to do that if you're getting into really big etchings, but this seemed to work okay for me. 
Okay, so that is okay. It's a, probably a little more subtle than I would like. So I'm gonna see if we could do a little bit of white. So, so that one I used was a Liquitex Basics. Again, a middle grade, student grade acrylic. Um, not a whole lot of body, but a little bit. So now I'm gonna try a heavier body. This is Liquitex Heavy Body. And I'm gonna just roll it with this pink over here on my palette. And we'll see what happens. You guys, I could just get lost in this all, all day. So that might have been a little too much paint, we'll see. And the thing is, like, I never look at any of these things. If they don't work out, it's not some big, big failure. It's just, we're experimenting, we're trying things. You can always paint over stuff, you know? Okay, let's see what that does. I don't know. Yeah, I like that. So obviously, that one's a little more noticeable. And I may even, <clears throat> seeing this, I may even go back, like do another one and even a little more white just to get that a little even crisper. But the whole point of this is because it's so random. It's random and textured. So that one, I don't know, maybe I can get one more print out of it. Let's see what I have that we could play with. Let me try this dark. Okay, so a little more white. And you guys, Callie is still here with me. <laughs> if you hear her, her jingling around, there are still some dummies popping off fireworks. It's really annoying and she is not a fan. Okay. Let's see what happens on this dark. Oh, I hope you guys aren't shaking too much. I'm trying not to shake the table too much. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. Now see what I may do, I may just cut that out, add it to my collage pile so that I can grab it sometime when I'm working on a piece. Um, I may, I'm thinking probably what I'll do when I really get into a production mode with this is I'll do like a whole bunch on one page and then alter them a little. So like maybe color that background in with a different color or maybe give her some little rosy cheeks with a crayon or you know you could just color that whole thing if you wanted and just let some of that texture show through. I think that the possibilities are so fun. So I'm gonna try one of my word stamps. Let's see what happens. Um, <laughs> let's just try it on some plain paper. So this is that carmine red that I had out. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to try brushing it on and see what happens. I think actually like a sponge would probably be better, but I don't feel like it. I don't feel like hunting down my sponge right now. But so many possibilities. This like really gets me jazzed. Okay. I'm feeling like this paint is really drying fast. It's so hot outside, you guys, that um, the air, so the air is just going, going, going today. And it's really sucking the humidity out of the room. And I'm finding that <laughs> everything's drying really fast. So, okay. I, that one definitely is not as successful. It's kind of there. It's kind of there. I think that the trick is to really get the paint on there. So, I lied. I'm going to see if I can find a sponge. 
got these wonderful little daubers that I love to play with. So let's see if getting it on a little thicker will give us give it a shot over this orange and that's what I find so exciting is you can do some really high contrast um, etchings with this and you can also do some really subtle things you know like the pink on the red I would consider that to be a little more subtle oh yeah see oh, that's fun let me pull that up so you can see that is fun and it's imperfect and it's got those great funky little little quirks where you can see that I you know some of the paint filled in some of it didn't but you still get that message so like this would be wonderful to cut out and just add to the collage pile I love that so what happens this is a just a news oops there's paint on there happens when I just press another print oh that's good okay okay we're learning together <laughs> so this newsprint really has um, what do I want to say it's got this texture that wants to soak up ink so I think printing on this newsprint could be the answer without even having any paint under it. It really soaks that right up. And you know, you could do fun variations, like we could do a little pink and white on one side, and I don't know, we'll try to see what this does. You guys are here for the ride. I'm... <laughs> No idea what I'm doing. Oh yeah, and we gotta move fast. So you could do like a little variation like that. And let's see, I think we wanna put it on something kind of dark. Let's try that, see what happens. And you know, sometimes the brayer might be the answer to getting that really crisp. is fun and quirky. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now, one thing I haven't tried yet, because I haven't really had the time to get back into my fabric projects, I'm curious about this on some fabric. Um, I'm guessing that probably the tighter the weave, the more success with this. I think you will want a really tight weave cotton that's maybe pre-washed you know what I mean um so now let's see about this hand and I'm gonna do this this is just plain old newsprint and this is a bigger piece so let's see I'll get something a little darker on here and I'm gonna try that brayer again and see what happens. I might be sorry. <laughs> we might be, no, we won't be sorry. We're just having fun. Okay, let me get that out of the way. So, I'm gonna quickly, oh yeah. And see, I'm getting, I'm picking up a little bit of that yellow and pink that we worked with before, and I like that. I mean, if you want something that's a little more pure, you definitely can go for that. But I love those little instances okay quickly dory turn it over oops i didn't really center it but that's okay okay and then i'm going to run that brayer and see what that does i think you probably would want a clean brayer also so maybe a couple brayers on hand one for rolling on the back and one for doing the inking Oh, you guys. Okay, so this is getting me really excited. Look at that. Isn't that fun? All that lovely texture. 
I'm excited about that. That little eyeball is not showing up so great. I think I didn't quite etch that in a way. But this is, I'm learning. I'm learning. So, you know, if I printed a bunch of these, let's say for cards or prints or something, and that eyeball was bothering me, I could certainly draw another eyeball on another piece of paper and collage it on. Or I could collage that entire heart. Or I could paint that whole heart in. You know, so it's not... It's not wasted, that's for sure. Okay, that's got me excited. Really excited. I hope that you are excited too. Hell yes, you're excited. Let's do one more. Um, let's try. I'm going to try. The, um, this is another Arteza. This one is emerald green. I'm probably going to have mud made up over here on this palette by the time I'm done, but that's okay. Okay, and let's see. We've got a green. So what if we did... Whoops. I kind of stuck my... I kind of stuck my pages together in my sketchbook. <laughs> let's do this. So I, I've been... Um, I took a cla an online class a while back, and something that really stuck with me from that instructor was he said destroy your sketchbook like and those words just really stuck with me um your sketchbook is just meant to be used abused and uh used up and just almost destroyed and I love that he said that because it really has helped me to loosen up and not be precious about about my sketchbook and my journals Okay, I'm going to go a little heavier with this. This is such a pretty green color. Let's see what happens. Let me stamp it. Yeah. It's feeling good. I hope it turns out. We'll see. Yes. Love it. And you know what would make that stand out even more is a little bit of white mixed with that to make it a little little more opaque so in fact let's try it you guys I could do this all day we could play all day here let's do a little white and I didn't even really mix it totally I just some kind of letting it Yeah, I'm definitely finding there's a different effect when you when you stamp on the painted surfaces as opposed to the raw newsprint. It's a different feel for sure. But I really feel like it's worth it to play on the painted surface because I love those lines coming up. And that one, of course, shows up a little better because there's a little white. Um, that's titanium white. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Fun, 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 fun. So what I'm going to do is um, go take these to the sink and give them a rinse because, like I said, after a while, paint starts getting in those little, those little etchings and um, it can kind of blur your print a little bit. But... The great thing is, this is so inexpensive and so easy, so that even if you use one to its demise, let's say, you can just etch another one easily. It's so fun. This has so many possibilities. And if you guys start um, doing this, I would love to see what you come up with. I think there's so many possibilities for even more layering, kind of a printmaking technique. Um, which I don't have time for today, but hopefully this has kind of got your juices flowing. But I hope you have a wonderful week. Dance it out, guys. Hope you're staying cool and safe and happy. And I thank you again for joining me for Talkie Tuesday. Um, it's going to be a busy few weeks while I get ready for Appleton, so I'm going to really try to check in every Tuesday. It, they may just be short little videos to say hi, but I appreciate your support and your comments. And if you think you have a friend who might be interested in some of this content, please feel free to share. 
Um, the more the merrier, and it helps to support my work. I really appreciate it. So I'll see you next week, friends. Bye.